chapter 17 of Where No Man Has Gone Before. By R.K. Stigers, A.K. 5. Clark walked down the hallways of the Enterprise, nodding occasionally to the crew members as they passed him by. His travels took him to the recreation deck, the site of Mr. Spock's research into the television shows, early to attending the Enterprise's five-year mission, and beyond. He entered, nodding to attend Harb Tanser at one of the tables. Harb, head of recreation, sat to attention. Captain? Kirkhouse smiled, at ease, Lieutenant. He looked around. Every table was occupied by a fellow crew member, a three-dimensional image playing out above the table's hollow projector. Each one of them had a pad and a stylus that they scribbled at furiously. Sorry about the commotion here, Harp. Harp shook his head. No need, sir, but thank you. He looked over from his right soldier. For what Mr. Spock told me, this is very important. Anyone out there want to bet that... This hard pronser guy is, in fact, some random character from a comic that you guys existed until I told you. Well, what do you know? According to Laddie's files, he is. That Spock. Three hollow projectors playing out before him. His eyes started back and forth, missing nothing. He kept his focus as I am pleased to report that we have managed to watch 83% of the episodes and all of the movies Trixie Lillamoon and Sunset Simmer have given us. I should be able to make appropriate countermeasures before the deadline. And have a pad. However, for the fifth movie, he has a pad curve. On it was an image of an older Vulcan male with a beard. Kirk looked at the pad. I didn't know you had a half-brother spot. I don't quite see Dr. Cook's head. Brother, Captain. Or any other siblings. I am in. So we mentioned this guy? No, 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 no. We haven't even said about it. You don't even know how you feel about it. You have I'm putting that aside now. <laughs> and technically, she's not his blood sister. Aside from that, though, the movie is at a Nimbus 3 that the Federation could have agreed to develop the Ambassador Center, as far as I've been able to determine, do exist. He has an eyebrow. I am not accurate to movies and television episodes. Kirk tried. Well, can't get it. All right. Before Spock could respond, Morris walked over, pad and paw. Commander, I have finished season seven of DS9. Singapore holding the pad out. Spock reached down and took it, his eyes barely glancing at direction. Thank you, Lieutenant. Please assist Mr. Sulu in finishing up Voyager. He's added the pad down on the table, finally taking his eyes off the images and looking directly at Kirk. Captain, do you require assistance? Yeah, you're going to need- oh! I think Thank you. He held his arms out. I was wondering if you'd like a watch. Cor Spock Kirk and I grew up. Per your orders, I have made several copies of the episodes and movies. It's like... Computer. Copy file, Star Trek 3. Search for Spock onto the data card. The computer spoke. Acknowledge. Copying. There was a ding. Ding! Spock pulled the card. He stood up and hesitated before holding out. Captain. May I ask the reason for your wishing to view this movie? Kirk took the card. That's down. Child worked for a moment. This Krug, I need to know this. Only then can I dedicate what to do about him. Spock down. Very well, Captain. Tank. He started to sit back down, but stop. Captain, if there's anything, it would be illogical for you not to seek help if needed. Kirk glanced down at the deck and tapped the card upon his hand. Thank you, Mr. Spock. I will keep that in mind. It was a long walk back to Kirk's quarters, but he reached it all too quickly. Walked in and made his way to the desk in the corner. After a few minutes, he slid the car into the slot into the desk. The monitor mounted and the desk lit up. Kirk cleared his throat. Ahem. Computer. Play recording on data card from the beginning. The computer beat. Mm. I know it's beginning playback. The screen lit up. Kirk drummed his fingers on the desk as the movie started. Cap closed his eyes as Spock's death played out before him. Con. He snapped open as a Klingon bird of prey declucked about the nine minute mark. He leaned forward. Hello, crew. He sat and watched the entirety of the movie, barely moving, except to look like a chance when David was killed. And to gas as the Enterprise self destructed. He bowed his head as Krug mourned the death of his almost his entire crew. 
So Kratos rolled, he pulled a card from the desk. Kratos in his hand. This, ladies and gentlemen, is another reason why Star Trek V is a I'm with RK. It's just a bad bourbon trip. Smell fell away. Kirk checked out. The glass of the car in hand once more before it was already forming in his mind. Materialized inside the castle of friendship's main foyer. He oriented himself. Quickly spying. As Kirk walked over, King dumped his chance to agree. Great it! This contains all the information. He's currently second officer on board the Katara. Mara Afriki looked around. I'm surprised Twilight isn't here. She and Spike are preparing food for us. She looked down at Kirk's hand. Do you have any plans? Kirk slowly held the D card up and looked it over. The King, do you have any plans concerning the albino? King shook his head. Between the opposite cells, Trixie and Lula alone, and Sunset Sivir gave us, and their general opinions on the ship, we have not had much time. I have sent the message to Kor and Koloff, but they haven't responded. Kling I do know, I will not rest until I have tracked him down to whatever hole he is hiding in, and kill him. Kirk bowed his head. You'll need help, correct? King's nine continued. Well, heard. what about him, Kirk? Do you suggest I recruit him? What is he hand about? Find out about Genesis. Get details about it. He'd be a valuable asset to you and your honey this cook. He may he'll kill your child. To her. He may kill him, Mara. If the sequence of events remain unaltered. However, the odds of that are happening are so low now. Not even Spock is really waste for me to go after him now, Mara. His eyes shifted to the left and down. To be honest, a small part of him, especially considering Genesis. He shook his head or someone, or emphasized him with the least. Mara shook her head. I will never understand you, Earthers. Kirk shrugged. Mara, we don't understand ourselves sometimes. I stopped speaking for a moment. Kirk was acting out of concern for the Klingon people. Just this potential for destruction scares me. How Kirk felt about it. King suddenly nodded. You bring up good points, Kirk. I will look into it after this mission's over. He half smiled. You have a knack of making the best of bad situations, Kirk. The door is near the back open. Twilight Spike walked out. Oh, Captain Kirk! Twilight called out, smiling. I'm glad to see you. She waved a wing at the doors. Spike and I have food ready for you three. So her eyes are back and forth. How if I ask dinner? King barked a laugh. <laughs> food is food, princess. We shall eat! And enjoy your cooking. Tully shook her head and waved to wing at Spike. I still eat Spike's cooking. He's far better in the kitchen than I'll ever be. Spike grinned and put down his chest slightly. Well, I try. Thanks, Twilight. That's a king. It might be a little bland than I hope, though. I tried to talk to Twilight to try out a spell so he could eat gems, but she shut it down. He sighed. Oh, I think he would have liked rubies, too. Twilight rolled her eyes. Spike. I really don't think it's a good idea to try experimental spells on foreign dignitaries. Mara walked over to the pair. She pulled her tricorder and flipped open the flap open. Spike, may I scan you while you eat the systems? But you're the only one I've met face to face. Spike looked up at Mara. Mara! He stretched his arms out and fight his biceps. Kang chuckled as he and Kirk walked towards the other three. Be careful, Spike! <laughs> I might have to challenge you to a duel. Well, no need for that, Captain. I only got eyes for one lady. Twilight rolled her eyes. Sure. If you'll follow me to the dining room. Side. His present target would be stepped. Mara and Kina have informed me of several incidents concerning the Empire. Some of them are easy to deal with, such as making sure no one other things. Its head dropped. If things do not change, Praxis will explode in 2293 due to overmining. It will devastate Kronos! He glanced at Kirk. What has Spark told you? For what I know, your first officer. He should be close to finishing all six theories by now. Kirk shook his head as he walked through the doors and started down a corridor. He has a team helping out with it. Okay, I want a detailed report as possible, and a few exceptions. I don't want it piecemeal. It could lead to ill-informed assistance down the line. Kang nodded. A wise decision, Kirk! They followed the others through a door on the left, into a small dining room. 
crystalline table or growing out of the floor dominated the room. Plates, silverware, bowls, and food laid out on it. Kang walked up to it and tapped it with his hand. Of course! He finally said, smiling. Twilight's horn glowed. Five chairs rained the table slid out. You don't have to be too formal, right? Dig it, everyone! She hopped onto the floor and into a chair. Spike, Kirk, Kang, Mara followed suit. Kirk looked up at Kang from across the table. Kang, do you feel comfortable talking about this with Twilight and Spike here? Kang looked to the princess and her dragon friend. I trust him, Cook. Twilight went to foreleg. I won't repeat anything you heard here, Captain. Cross my heart, hope to fly, sink a cup, kick in my out! She cried out as her hope touched her open eye. Mara stood up. Princess, are you all right? Spike, the swing between Mara and Twilight, held his hands up and waved Mara off. No need to worry, Mara. Twilight's done that so often, I think her eyes has got a callus over her or something. Twilight's open eye narrowed. Oh, very funny, Spike! Kang stared at her a moment before turning to face Kirk. As I said, practice will explode. Yeah, thanks to the Empire trying to keep up with Starfleet, we will. He his fist and smacked at the table, sending out a small spiral of cracks from the impact. We will be unable to do anything about it! Twice he was folded flat against her skull. That sounds horrific, Captain. She thumped her chest a little hoof. Well, Equestria will help out, no matter what. King sighed. You might, princess. The feather race it will. He looked up at Kirk and half smile. You look exactly as I did when I first heard the news, Kirk. Yes, after decades of hostility, the Federal Racer will help the Klingon Empire save itself from its own short sightedness. It won't be easy, but it does happen. Kirk has smiled. As one of my heroes once said, do I not destroy my enemies when I make them my friends? Spike barked a laugh. <laughs> that might as well be Twilight's motto, Captain. Kirk looked to Spike. Somehow, I'm not surprised, Spike. Twilight said Bob down. I found it too much to be preferable to the alternative. Kanga smiled. It would depend on the enemy, Twilight. Still, I cannot deny it has provided benefits for my crew and I. And it will save the Empire. Question is, though, what do I do with this information, if anything? Spike tilted his head to the side. Wait, what? Okay, I know I'm a young dragon, but isn't a moon exploding and damaging your home planet bad? Kang nodded to him. It is, but there is much good to come from it, Spike. Without it, I cannot see how the Empire will accept help from the Federation. He shook his head. We are proud people. Sometimes too proud for our own good. I do not see a way for the Empire to cease hostilities unless there is no other choice. Such is the one Praxis provides, Twilight said, her ears falling down against her skull. Kang seemed to strike on himself. Such is the one Praxis provides, he repeated. Shut out, see our face twisting our rage, and that's not the end of it! The Romulans, our supposed allies, will stab us in the back! Attacking us at Kittimer in the Android 3. Do you know who will aid us? Do you know who will help us? Twice stared out, eyes slightly wide. The Federation? Hang on to Kirk, still sitting. Perhaps your people are more honorable than I thought. Perhaps we are not so honorable as I believed us to be. Kirk arced her eyebrow. He held up his right hand. King, if you do not wish to talk about anything, there's no need to. I'll be receiving my own report about the upcoming offense from Mr. Spock. King shook his head. You do have not held any secrets from me. It would be dishonorable to hold anything back from you, Kirk. He wrapped his knuckles and goes right hand against the table. Political expediency will have replaced honor in the High Council. The House of Duras are traitors to the Empire, collaborators with the Romulans, and their actions will cost us dearly. Mara spoke up, her expression dark. They will plunge us into civil war and nearly destroy the Empire. She leaned forward. Do you know what the worst part is? She abruptly slammed her fist into the table as he both Twilight and Spike to jump in their seats. The High Council will attempt to cover up their crimes and frighten someone else. Kang snarled. Their actions will bring shame and dishonor upon us all. He shook his head. And yes, 
As Mara said, it will lead to civil war. And the fairy leads to access will be brought to light. But it will go that far. Oh, it's a spreadsheet fell. I say hollow for a moment. Fall that far. And I do not know if there is anything I can do to stop it. Spice scratched the side of his head. But you know that's going to happen, right? Is there anything you could do at all? King constant the young dragon. There's too much unknown, Spike. The television series are Federation-centered, was made sense upon reflection. There are large gaps, and worse, the rock is deeply ingrained. He shook his head. I once met an old man, a magistrate named Carlos. He warned me that honor was becoming meaningless in the Empire. I would have heeded his words then. Kirk stood up, went around the table, ran to King. So, what will you do, King? Nothing. He crossed his arms and in his jaw. Like the king, I know. King met Kirk's eyes. Cross his own sorrow and leaned back slightly. There might be nothing I can do, Kirk. The House of Duras is very powerful. He ran his thumbnail on his forehead. And the king, House of Kang is not. Kirk kept to see he saying. I saw to the kings. I did not think Kang, son of Kena, would back down from a fight to restore honor to the empire he fights for. There's an eyebrow. Are you scared? The temperature of the room seemed to drop by several degrees. Kang growled his low throat. You would do well not to travel in that cat direction, Kirk. My respect for you only goes so far in holding me back. Kirk leaned forward. If you're willing to kill me for the massive slight, why aren't you willing to fight for the Empire? Or at least try? Twilight's horn flared. She disappeared from the hearing between the two. She spread her wings out, forcing the two back. Hey! Hey! Her head went back and forth. I did not need you two bickering like this, or tossing deadly failed threats back and forth like a couple of foals. She turned her back to Prince Kirk. Captain Kirk, I know you have King's best interests at heart, but going to you like that is probably not going to have the intended effect. King smirked. Bell White's Twilight turned over. Captain King, Kirk may have gone about it the wrong way, but like I said, he does have your best intentions at heart. She tilted her head to Kirk Sorensen, even if he's probably not aware of the entire situation. Kirk let out a small sigh. That is true, Princess. Spread his arms out. You may not believe it, Kang, but I don't want to clean my empire to fall. Kang stared at him. I leave you, Kirk. Kirk to the table and turned to it. I shall try to explain things to you as best as I can. And maybe you can see the true difficulties that lie ahead for my people. Flying Spike was as Kirk, Kang, and Mara would beat away to their ships. Yeah. Okay, that went interesting, Twilight said. She rubbed her forehead with Wayne. It's quite against the case, too. I didn't know seeing Klingon's head bridges, for instance. Spike nodded. Yeah, so two questions then. Twilight got some. Oh. Spike paused. I let his hand start clicking on his claws. Well, maybe more of the two. Anyway, first off, what's your plan to get these two working together? Thighs are in flash. A scroll, quill, and inkwell flash for her to existence. The three objects floating in front of her. Well, first off, we're in Cleonese. The Trixie for Carolot High is apparently fluent in it. Then, read everything I can get my hopes on concerning their government, culture, and anything else I can think of. I have to fill in the gaps between the episodes. She gasped, struggled on the scroll. <gasps> I've been watching the episodes too. Spike nodded. Okay, next. Twilight Sides looked down. Next, let's start the detailed multi brand's plan using said information that should aim Kang and whatever changes he may wish to make. Spike rolled his eyes. Uh, Twilight, do you really think you'll be able to do all that before Kang leaves? He held up a hand, placed it over Twilight's muzzle. And attend to all your duties, obligations, and a normal sleep schedule that I, Cadence, and possibly others will make sure you keep! Twilight so wiggled her head back and forth. Well, I could send the plan over to him to over suspects, maybe. Or if I can back at a later date. I've got to do something, Spike! Spike nodded and patted her on the shoulder. I know, Twilight. It wouldn't be you if you didn't. Just make sure it's the right thing to do. Twilight nodded. You're right, Spike. I can't rush this. There's too much to stake to go half-flanked in any plans I can make. 
It's Frank's mild sign of relief. Well, thanks, Celestia, for that. So, next question. It's I saw he continued. Who are you? What have you done with the real Twilight Sparkle? Silence descended upon the room. Twilight's eyes narrowed. She lowered her head and stepped forward. Her face had inserted two from spikes. I'm sorry, could you explain that last question? She asked her gray teeth. Spike returned her own narrow glare. Cross as he spoke. You just learned last night that Kay and Shining Armor are going to have a baby. Not once did you lose control while talking to the Captain's Kirk or Kang or Mara. You didn't even mention to him. Twice so swallowed. She glanced away from Spike. Her teeth covered slightly. Okay. Good point. She sighed. Believe me, Spike. I would love nothing more than hop up and down a circle telling him all about my new niece or nephew. But if I did that... Neither one of them would have taken you seriously again? Spike finished. Twice head ducked low. Her cheeks turned redder. Exactly. It's one thing to do that in the answer room of the Enterprise. Another thing to do that here in a meeting between two captains. The corner of her mouth turned up slightly. And I think I got enough out of it last night. Spike's eyes swayed. Stared off in a sweet moment. His memories assail him. I bounced up and down, circling shining armor and cadence. Spike flowing behind her. Twice magic wrapped around him. She tossed and stood turned with each bounce. Twice chanted, grinning wildly. She stopped in front of Cadence and shining armor. I'm going to be the greatest on any question yet. No, the galaxy! She started hopping up and down again. Spike trailing around. Spike's flank and slipped his head. Yeah, you sure did. He mumbled under his breath. He cleared his throat before continuing. So, will you promise me that if I say for you to slow down or take a break, you will? Twilight nodded, straightening up. Cross my heart, hope to fly. Sick a cupcake in my eye, she chanted, making the most of the pinky promise. And remembering to close her eye this time. She paused for a few moments before speaking once more. So, would it be all right for me to start working now? Spike wrote his chin. Well, okay, Twilight, we can start. But you will break for dinner later on. Twilight grinned. She turned, but stopped to look at her shoulder and Spike. Wait, we? Didn't you have plans or something? Spike shrugged. Eh, I can reschedule. No one princess needs her number one assistant. Twilight grinned. Before closing, she sits and lifted Spike onto her back. She does indeed, Spike. Thanks. She reared back and kicked her legs in the air. To the library! A horn flared once more, seeing Spike teleport now to the kitchen and fast into a flash of light. Ladies and gentlemen, if um, you have been overwhelmed by uh, bad OOC Twilight as of late, especially when considering a certain idiot by the name of Mikan, please enjoy this completely in character, completely rational, well written, well done Twilight, where the idea of trying to help a person is not looked down upon. And then, remind yourself that there are good writers out there. Thanks to Talon and Thor, Sun Tzu, Rainbow Double Dash for the help of proofreading and editing. I know I don't like Star Trek V. Talking up to a bad dream brought up by too much bourbon and move on. Will do. I like forgetting Star Trek V exists anyway.